Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we're going to be covering the PLX82 Ethernet IP to PROFINET controller gateway. This gateway allows EIP-based Rockwell processors to control up to 36 PROFINET RT devices by emulating a PROFINET controller on the PROFINET network. Ethernet IP-enabled Schneider Electric controllers can also use this gateway. In this video, we'll configure the gateway to allow a Control Logix controller to read and write 128 words of data to a device on a PROFINET network. Here are the IP addresses of the devices that we'll be communicating with. This video will cover assigning the gateway an IP address on each network, setting up the amount of data to exchange with the PROFINET device, configuring the gateway as an EIP server with a class 1 connection, and configuring the gateway as a PROFINET controller in ProSoft Configuration Builder for PROFINET. Let's begin. First, we'll open up ProSoft Configuration Builder, or PCB for short. Right-click on the default module in the tree view and select Choose Module Type. In the product line filter, select PLX80, and from the drop-down menu, choose the PLX82 EIP PNC, and click OK. Now we'll assign an IP address for the gateway. Expand PLX82 EIP PNC and go down to Ethernet Configuration at the bottom. Right-click and choose Configure. We have two ports which can each be configured with different network settings. This is where we configure the IP address for the Ethernet IP driver. I'll change the IP address to 10.12.1.160. This is an address on the subnet for my Ethernet IP network. You obviously will want to use an IP address on your subnet. Also, we can change the net mask and gateway while we're here. And once this is done, click OK. Now we haven't actually set the IP address yet, it's still operating on the default IP. And even though the default IP is not on our subnet, we can still download to it by assigning a temporary IP address using our ProSoft Discovery service. Right click on the module and choose Download from PC to Device. Once this window opens, click Browse Devices. And in the new window, you should see your PLX82 gateway. Right-click on it and choose Assign Temporary IP Address. And here we can assign a temporary IP address that the gateway will use until the next time it cycles power. We can just use the same IP that we entered earlier since we already know that it's available. And for me, it's 10.12.1.160. I'll click OK. Now make sure that the IP address that you're using for your temporary IP is entered in the Ethernet field and choose Download. And this will permanently set the IP address that we entered under the Ethernet configuration. Now we'll configure the memory for the PROFINET portion of this gateway. So the first section, PNC, is configuring how much data will be exchanged between this module and the PROFINET device. So click on PNC and you can see the input and output for the byte offset for our internal database. Essentially, we are selecting the size of the input and output sections for our database and where we want them to begin. The input and output terminology here applies to the perspective of the gateway's PNC port. So, input data refers to the data being read from devices on the PROFINET network into the PLX82 gateway. Output data is written from the gateway's internal memory out to the PROFINET devices. A byte is half a word, so the input byte offset of 4000 equates to word 2000 in our internal memory. The output of zero corresponds to word zero, of course. Also, if you have floating point or other multi-register values and you need to adjust byte swapping for the entire PROFINET network, you can do so here. I don't need to, so I'll leave all of this default. We'll configure the PROFINET controller port down here under Ethernet configuration a little later. So the next thing, we'll configure the Ethernet IP side of our PLX82. The gateway can function as either a server or a client or both at the same time if need be. 
If you need the gateway to function as a server, the gateway requires no real configuration. If, however, you need the gateway to function as a client on your EIP network, you'll need to configure the client and then create some commands. For this example, our gateway will function as a server and will create a class one connection from our gateway to the EIP client, in this case, a Rockwell processor, so that it will see us as connected IO. Expand EIP class one connection under PLX82 EIP PNC, and let's take a look at connection one. You'll notice that the default is 248 words per input and output. I'm gonna resize that to 128 words of input and output, and the starting point is word zero and 2000 of our database, respectively. This matches the input and output byte offsets for the PNC. Unless you made changes to the offsets under PNC, you can leave those values default. Now is a good time to download your configuration to the module. So right click on the module name, choose download from PC to device, make sure the correct IP address is selected and choose download. The gateway will reboot with the new configuration. Before we can add this gateway to the Rockwell program, we'll have to add the PLX82's EDS to your list in RS links. This is a simple text file that will allow the Rockwell configuration tools to identify the gateway. So open up RS links, choose communications and select RS who. From here, expand ethernet IP and find the EIP PNC gateway Right click on it and choose upload EDS from device. Follow the prompts to finish uploading your EDS. Now we will add this module to our version 20 or newer RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 project. Right click on the ethernet icon and choose new module. And from here, uncheck all vendors, then scroll down and check ProSoft technology. Now choose your module and click create. Give the module a name and the same IP address that we entered in PCB. If you click on the Connections tab, you'll see where you can adjust the RPI times if you need to. Back in the General tab, click on the Change button under Module Definition. Here we'll configure our connection to match what we set up in PCB, which for me will be data type integer and 128 words for input and output. Now from the drop down window under connection one, we can select additional connections if you need more than one. Once you're finished, go ahead and click OK and click close to exit the window. Now you have an Ethernet IP device that you can monitor right from your Rockwell processor. That takes care of the Ethernet IP portion of the gateway. We'll move on to configure the PROFINET controller portion. This entails configuring how much data will be exchanged between the module and the PROFINET device. Double click on PROFINET down at the bottom. If you haven't saved your project up until this point, you'll be asked to create a save file for your configuration. And once you've done that, PCB for PROFINET will launch. Once it opens, double click on the PLX82 EIP PNC icon that appears in the network view, and this will open the controller network settings window. We'll select controller network settings over on the left, and here you can set the name of the station and give it a description. And we can also set the IP address that we want the gateway to use for the PROFINET network. And I'll set the IP address for the PROFINET port to 10.12.2 18. This is a valid IP for my PROFINET network. We'll set the mask and gateway address as well. Then we'll click the apply button and then click OK. Next we'll need to import device information for any devices that we want to connect to through the PLX82. These would either be GSD or GSD ML files. Click on the network tab, then click on import device description in the menu bar. Browse to the location of your GSD or GSD ML files and select the appropriate file for your device. We'll click open and then yes to the prompts. The file is displayed in the pane over on the right of the interface. So we'll expand the slave folder and drill down through the slave device icons, locate our device from the catalog, and then drag and drop the slave onto the PROFINET bus line in the network view. 
If you have multiple slaves, you would perform this same step to add each of them to the network. Now we can configure the slave device, and this entails four simple steps. First, we'll double click the device, and in the window that pops up, we'll click Add Module. Then we'll select an input space allocation. I'll size it to match what we selected back in PCB, which was 128 16-bit words, which equals 256 bytes. We'll then click Add Module again, and this time select an output space allocation. Again, 256 bytes to match our configuration on the EIP side. Click Apply, and then OK. Looking at the address table, our device configuration should look something like this now. As you can see, our device is configured with 256 input bytes and 256 output bytes. We can also see all the addresses used in the process data image. These addresses refer to the Profinet controller. If you do have multiple devices, you can see them all listed in the device table here. The IP address table shows the IP addresses of all connected devices in the controller configuration. You can edit them from here if you need to. We also have tables for process data where you can see the input and output sizes for each device. And if you expand the device, you can also see the names of different elements. The other entry to note here is the Ethernet devices down at the bottom. This page actually performs a search of the network and provides a view of all connected slave devices. Once they've been discovered, you can edit their name and IP address. Just select the device, enter a new name, and click Set Name. Or you can click on the IP address tab, enter a new IP address, and then scroll down in the pane and click Set Address. We'll save this part of the configuration, and now we're ready to download the final configuration to the gateway. So back in PCB, right-click on the module, select Download from PC to Device. The download window opens. You can click Test Connection to confirm that the gateway's IP actually matches the address in PCB. Then you can click Download to send the project to the gateway. And that should do it. That's how you configure a PLX82 EIP PNC gateway to connect an Ethernet IP controller to a Profinet device. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX82 EIP PNC gateway, use the link in the description to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call. Happy training!